Live from KSAT 12, the news at 5 starts right now. As we come on air, results are coming in from the Nevada caucuses with under 10% of precincts reporting Bernie Sanders is in the lead. That news as the Democratic presidential candidate arrives in San Antonio. That is our top story this evening. Senator Sanders will be hosting a rally here tonight at Cowboys Dance Hall. This marks the senator's first visit to the Alamo City during his 2020 presidential campaign. Stephen Gavassos is already at Cowboys Dance Hall getting ready for his arrival. Stephen. Well, the last few hours have been busy for the presidential hopeful. At 3 o'clock today, he was in El Paso for a rally there. And in just a few hours, he's expected to take the stage here at Cowboys Dance Hall to address his crowds of supporters. Now, we are told lines have been forming out here since earlier in the morning, many hoping the senator will address topics ranging from health care, immigration reform, and border security. One of his supporters that we talked to stressed the importance of voting during this election period. And I think it's an obligation. It says it in the Constitution for people to be engaged in their communities. What better way to be engaged in with your community than to vote? Now, at last check, the polls show that Sanders is ahead of the rest of the Democratic candidates. Now, Senator Sanders is expected to take the stage here at 7 tonight. We'll have more on that coming up tonight on the Night Beat, including our interview with him coming up later tonight. For now, reporting outside Cowboys Dance Hall, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Stephen. This week kicked off early voting here in Bear County. So far, more than 32,000 people have voted. When broken down by political party, that's more than 19,000 for Democrats and more than 13,000 for Republicans. As for the busiest polling site so far, that would be Brook Hollow Library over on the north side. It's seen the most traffic. Early voting runs through February 28th. Election day is March 3rd. Sergeant First Class Javier Gutierrez is now laid to rest. Friends, family, and the whole San Antonio community gathered to remember the fallen hero at his burial service this morning. Gutierrez was killed on February 8th during an attack in Afghanistan. During his time serving the Army, Gutierrez received several awards, including the Army Commendation Medal. Family members say it's a tough time right now, but the support from the community is a big help. We're getting through, th through the comfort of our our family members and through our, our church and through uh, just the general public coming in and sharing their condolences with us. So it's, it's really helping us get through, especially with the support of the military. Javier was a, a third generation combat veteran. His grandfather served in World War II um, and his father served in Desert Storm, Desert Shield. So uh, it's, a, it's a family tradition of, of excellence in combat and Javier carried that on and uh, paid the ultimate sacrifice at the end of the day. Sergeant First Class Antonio Rodriguez was also killed during the Afghanistan attack. He was a Las Cruces, New Mexico native. Taking a look at other top stories this Saturday evening, a driver's in the hospital after crashing into a utility pole this morning. It happened around 2.30 while he was driving uh, southbound in the 400 block of State Highway 151. Police say the driver lost control and the vehicle wrapped around the pole. The driver had to be extracted from the vehicle and was transported to Bamsey in serious condition. The cause of that crash is unknown. Fire crews responded to an overnight house fire on the northwest side. It happened just before 1 a.m. in the 7800 block of Shady Hollow Lane. Crews say it started in a trash can from barbecue grill ashes before traveling to a fence, eventually reaching the garage wall. The flames were quickly put out and no injuries were reported, but the damages are estimated at nearly $6,000. Police have identified the man they say allegedly robbed a woman back in October. Here's his photo. An arrest affidavit says 22-year-old Andre Manjares asked if a female friend uh, wanted to buy his girlfriend's purse. When they met up to make that purchase, he and his girlfriend drove off with the purse, the money, and a cell phone. The victim then dragged alongside the car, falling to the pavement. Manjares' bond was set at $200,000. Thursday marked the end of the 14-day quarantine period for the first group of coronavirus evacuees at JBSA Lackland. The 90 people are now medically cleared and released. The first confirmed patient in that group has also been treated and transferred from Methodist Hospital Texan. Two more evacuees from the Diamond Princess Cruises have tested positive and are currently being treated. Overseas, the World Health Organization is making its first visit to Wuhan, China since the coronavirus outbreak began. Here's ABC's Monaco Sarabdi with the details. Amid the growing novel coronavirus crisis, a team of medical specialists from the World Health Organization traveling to Wuhan, China, 
the epicenter of the outbreak. There are now more than 77,000 confirmed cases of the virus, now called COVID-19 worldwide, a majority of those cases in China. But South Korea seeing an uptick, more than 400 cases diagnosed, 80 percent of them linked to a single hospital and a church. Numerous towns in northern Italy now on lockdown, local authorities in Lombardy and Veneto closing schools, businesses and restaurants, sporting events and church masses canceled. Nationwide, at least 50 form confirmed cases in Italy. Authorities in Japan confirming a passenger who got off the Diamond Princess after the cruise ship's quarantine came to an end has now tested positive positive, becoming the first known case of infection among the passengers. Another 32 passengers from that ship will be quarantined for two weeks at a hospital in northwest England. Four other UK nationals from the Diamond Princess who tested positive for the virus are being treated at hospitals in Japan. Here at home, 13 passengers from that ship are being monitored in Nebraska. 11 have tested positive for the virus. So far, the other two are negative. The Centers for Disease Control now warning Americans that COVID-19 could begin spreading in the U.S. It's very possible, even likely, that it may eventually happen. Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, Washington.